So the next phase of my electronics build for R2 is to take everything that I had built on my bench test bed and rearrange it and optimize it so that it will fit much more easily inside R2. Uh, but as I will show you, there's a couple of unique challenges that uh, I'm faced with uh, that are going to require some creative solutions. So as I started to dismantle my test board, uh, I came across a number of lessons learned that I will definitely be applying to the final board. Um, first of all, this board here, just being a test bed, I was kind of putting stuff wherever I kind of had space for it. Um, obviously, a little bit more planning is going to be required. And one of the things that was a little bit annoying was having my positive and negative bus bars scattered all over the place meant that any time I was running power, to any of my electronics, I kind of had to split the positive and negative wires and have them run all over the place. Um, I would really much prefer to keep everything neat and tidy, keep the positive and negative bus bars close together. Uh, that would also allow me to sort of leverage the fact that you know you can get uh, black and red paired wires like this, and if you can keep them together, it'll help with keeping the wire neat. Um, and I think really the best way to do that is to put the power distribution on the back side of the board and keep your electronics on the front side. Uh, that's going to include the fuse blocks as well as all of my bus bars, my voltage converter. Um, all of those things I think will just reside on the back side of the board. Um, that way I can route wires to it a little bit easier. The other thing uh, that I noticed is I really like these uh, heat shrink um, connectors. Um, you get the benefit of the, the physical crimp connection as well as the strain relief from the heat shrink tubing. Uh, however, the, uh, the heat shrink tubing is, is long enough that it really uh, you know, limits your, your radius of curvature here. And so it ends up making the footprint of these parts really big. So a real easy solution is just to, you know, when I'm making my connectors for the real thing, I'm going to cut the uh, heat shrink down before I apply it. And then that actually is going to allow me to get a much tighter curve radius, as you can see here on the saber tooth. Um, that way, you know, any pass through holes can be much closer to the components and uh, it'll help reduce the footprint size. And then obviously the last thing I mentioned before is planning. Uh, you need to have all of your components um, so that you can lay out your board correctly. And uh, that kind of forced the issue um, my little amplifier here is just a really small, low wattage, low power amp. Um, and I kind of knew that I was going to want to replace it or upgrade it at some point in the future, but I kind of decided that now would be the good time to do that. So um, I did shop around and shout out to John Salt over on his droid building channel. Um, pointed out this manufacturer of uh, relatively inexpensive but decent quality amplifiers. And uh, I ended up going with a stereo plus subwoofer. I don't, I'm not going to add a subwoofer right now, but in case I do, this was only about 10 bucks more than the version that didn't have a subwoofer. And since it's obviously a large footprint, um, you know, better to go with the larger one now um, so I can make room for it on the board. So uh, yeah, so those are some of the principles that I will be applying in terms of migrating what I have on this large board, which is way too big to fit in R2. Um, and you know, what I'm going to take into account when I create the actual board. Um, so yeah. All right, so if we take a look at R2, uh, what is typically done is uh, this space here in the back is where the electronics panel is usually put. Uh, and most droids would have a removable back panel. Um, basically the entire space spanning here from the bottom, even sometimes all the way up to the top would be removable, which gives you direct access from the outside. Unfortunately, uh, at the time I printed this Mark III body, uh, the version that included a removable back panel was not available. Uh, I could have chosen not to glue in some of the panels, but at the time my Fusion 360 skills weren't really all that great. I would have had to come up with some sort of uh, connection me mechanism, uh, whether it's magnets or some sort of latch. So my, uh, my thought process this whole time has been uh, I would find a way to mount my electronics board inside R2. I would only have access from the top, which means that for me to do any sort of meaningful work on uh, the electronics, I'm going to have to easily be able to remove the board from R2. So that got me thinking of some quick and easy ways to create a mounting system that would allow that. So if we take a closer look inside R2, 
uh, down both sides of the body, you have those long vertical rails that have the holes in them. In fact, that's what, on this side, what the motor mount um, is connected to. Um, and right away, I thought, well, that might be a way for me to come up with a, a quick and easy way to attach and remove uh, my electronics board. So um, I came up with a pretty cool idea. So just as I did for my test bed, I'm going to be using a nylon cutting board as the basis for mounting my electronics. I actually found this particular board, I think I got two of them uh, at maybe a local Walmart a while back. Uh, these are just a shade under 11 inches wide, which conveniently enough is exactly the distance between those two rails. And then what I found were I found these little spring latches. Um, and these also just happen to be the right size to fit in the holes. So I thought, well, there we go. I can mount a couple of these on the bottom, maybe a third one up at the top, and uh, those should be relatively easy uh, to reach in and release from the droid. So let's see how everything fits. So I'm loving how this is working out. Uh, those spring catches fit perfectly in there. And like, as I mentioned, the board is about the perfect width. I'm gonna need to do a little bit of creative shaping up at the top so that uh, it can be easily removed and avoid some of the obstacles up here. Um, but uh, I definitely think this approach is going to work. It should be relatively easy for me to be able to remove this. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think the next step is to uh, begin a more detailed prototype using foam board or something like that that I can easily modify and uh, get just right uh, before I start modifying the cutting board. All right, so after a little bit of fiddling around, uh, I have a piece of foam board that I've now mocked up. I've also attached three of the little spring latches. Um, and by notching it out there, uh, what this allows me to do is I can release this one, and with those wires out of the way, I'll be able to actually pivot the board down. Um, and if I end up doing my power distribution on the back, uh, including the fuses, this would give me an easy way to replace the fuses without having to take the whole board out. But getting the board uh, all the way out really won't be that much of a problem. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm liking this. So um, the next step is to start figuring out how I'm going to place all of the components on the board. So here's a fun little trick for planning your layout. For each of the electronic components, I created a little paper template. Uh, I used uh, my prototype board as my, as my guide, uh, as well as tracing the actual part out, uh, the mounting holes, and then also added cutouts uh, for where the power and or signal wires would need to pass through to the back side of the board. Uh, doing this for each of the components has kind of allowed me to do some clever planning where I can see that uh, if I were to position the amplifier up here, the saber tooth and the siren, then all three of them then could share the same cutout for power and so forth. Um, in addition, I also need to start planning um, where all of my peripheral connections are going to be. So uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to have to be able to take this board out pretty easily. So uh, I want to make sure that all of the connections that uh, attach to other points in the droid are um, easily accessible and logically grouped together. Things like the dome motor, my umbilical for the dome, um, the drive motors, all those kinds of things, speakers. Um, I'm going to have to start to plan where those connections are going to be. So uh, based on this, I'm going to continue to uh, work this out and uh, see if I can come up with something that's going to work. All right, I've uh, done a little bit more of the mock-up on this first draft with foam board. Uh, I've mounted my amp up into the top. I want to make sure that that will clear uh, everything inside the droid. And I've kind of roughly marked out where some of the components could be. Uh, I'm not exactly uh, finalized on this. I could end up moving things around. Uh, on the back side, I've kind of taped into place some of the main components just as an idea of where things might go. Put the fuse blocks up near the top so that I have easy access to swap those out, as well as the negative bus bar in between them. Uh, my voltage converter, uh, that'll just need to be off to the side, but I also need to make sure that that's going to fit into that spot 
this is would be the side of the board that faces the outside skin of the droid so i need to make sure that everything's going to fit um but anyway yeah this is a good start let's uh, see how this fits all right so uh the board still fits into uh its spot there's actually plenty of clearance back here for the voltage regulator and the fuse blocks and if i unlatch this fold it down there's still plenty of clearance there for the amplifier uh, controls to not get in the way. So this would give me easy access to the back of the panel so I can change fuses if need be. And uh, depending on where I end up putting the battery connection, it might be all the way down at the bottom, but I should be able to reach that pretty well. So I think based off of this, I've got a pretty good plan for moving forward. Uh, I think over the next week or so, I'm going to uh, just continue refining this um, and uh, try and get all the components on there, maybe pick up a few different bus bars uh, of the right size that I need and uh, see if I can't flush this thing out and then start we're transitioning from the foam board onto the actual cutting board. So uh, hopefully that'll uh, bring me one more step to getting this guy uh, completely mobile. Thanks for watching.